So the key part behind general purpose robots uh, is a model called Involved AI Foundation Model. Uh, with this model, uh, the robot can understand people's order, can perceive different environment, and it can perform tasks all by its own. So we develop a model called Embodied AI Foundation Model, which is uh, very different from the ChatGPT model developed by OpenAI. Uh, the, the most different part is that our model has a better spatial intelligence, so that our model can see the environment better. Uh, the second part is that the output of the model is the numerical action signals directly uh, to control the robot. It not, it's not only answers or videos or images generated by the model. The model itself can generate numerical action signals. Uh, with the help of this model, um, mm -hmm. we can uh, let the robot can do pretty much any tasks. So uh, we are using our robots in scenarios including warehouses, uh, manufacturing, uh, and gradually to households, maybe someday on Mars. <laughs> That's funny, Eric. Uh, but, you know, it could be the case one day, right? Uh, to what extent are your humanoid robots entering the very competitive industrial production lines? What's the adoption rate like? Uh, well, uh, there are several uh, key things you need to consider uh, to develop uh, general purpose robots. One part is you need to have the uh, best embodied foundation model. The second part is uh, to have a stable and a, a lower cost hardware design. And the third part, as you just said, uh, you need to push your robot into uh, real scenarios, let people use it. The more people use it, uh, the smarter your robot will be. So uh, nowadays, we already sign contract with uh, top tier car manufacturers, uh, with uh, semiconductor factories, uh, and uh, biotech factories as well public service. Uh, later on this year, if you visit some airports in China, you will see our robots serving people. You think what you're developing, uh, the humanoid robots, do you think you can compete with the big four uh, that's out there? I'm talking about the ABB, the KUKA, the FANUC, and uh, Yaskawa. Do you think we can give them a run for the money? Uh, well, uh, this is a great question. So I think the humanoid or general purpose robot is uh, essentially a new generation of intelligent device. Uh, this type of device uh, is invented after the large model area. So as a new company focusing on the general purpose robot, I think we, have, we do have advantage uh, in this area. The big four, are all, for, for example, like ABB, uh, they have their own advantage in maybe uh, industry usage or the single function usage. So the advantage of our robot is that we can do complex tasks or uh, we can uh, let our robot to learn new things very quickly. Uh, and our robot will have this kind of common sense. For example, if you need to find a cold cloak, our robot will turn to refrigerators and open the refrigerator and get the cloak for you. Uh, it's a different type of thing uh, we are developing, very different from the um, the big four companies. Eric, uh, you just completed a Series A funding. As a startup, what are the challenges securing the kind of investor that you need to help you develop the, the robotics that you need? Uh, well, uh, there are several things uh, or challenges to uh, pushing forward our product. Uh, the first one is to uh, get the top talents uh, all over the world. We just set up a collaboration with Peking University, one of the uh, top universities in China. And I also got my degree from Purdue University. I'm very grateful uh, to my PhD advisors. The uh, key uh, element to win in this war is to uh, get top talents. And second part is that, as you, as you just said, uh, you need to get enough funding uh, to polish your product. I think. Uh, a more uh, efficient way is to let people use it and uh, get data back as well as get some cash back. And this, this is a, a more effective and efficient way uh, to keep running a company rather than just raising funds. Hmm.